or the work session, August 26, 2019. Uh, Council Member Laura Tomlin is not here with us tonight. So we'll go on to the uh, general, I don't have to excuse her again. Do I have to, do I have to excuse her again? No, thank you. Okay, so we have one item on the agenda tonight. I'd like to remind council that staff will be pausing intermittently to answer any questions. Um, so it's number one, staff will provide information regarding the housing trends for a single and multifamily housing. Christopher Baker will present and he will jo be joined by Katie Wilkin, planning manager and Alex Latinsky, planner three. All right, you've got the floor. Thank you, Mayor, council, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity tonight to have this discussion and collaboration with you that will ultimately, we hope, um, result in some policy direction regarding single family rentals. As you know, the development of Goodyear and the trends that we are experiencing are very important to, as we build the community together. And your input is vitally, vitally critical in helping us move forward in a very progressive as well as responsible manner. So we thank you for the opportunity for you to give us some input tonight. Alex and Katie and I are going to present information and statistics regarding multifamily trends in the city. And we are going to pause at very strate strategic transitions in order to answer any questions that you may have. And then, as I mentioned, at the end of the presentation, we'll also be asking you some, uh, a very poignant policy question. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Katie. Thank you. I just wanted to go over a couple concepts um, for housing just to make sure we're all on the same page and talking about the same types of dwelling units. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about tonight is conventional multifamily. Um, so typically apartments, typically garden style apartment communities are built in Goodyear and then an example condominium on the other slide, other picture on this slide. Um, they're typically around 12, 20 acres in size typically include 200 to 400 dwellings. They can be rental or ownership, um, and th that can change over its lifetime. The, uh, a rental can conduise, and to partially answer the question from last week, um, for this type of dwelling unit, a condo would not require a rezoning typically. So then the other thing we're gonna be talking about is single family rental. These are typically 10 to 12 dwelling units per acre, and they're typically about 150 to 300 homes on 10 to 20 acres. They're very similar to conventional multifamily that they often have a central amenity, such as a pool, open space, clubhouse. Um, however, they differ in that they're typically one story. I do wanna be clear, this is the common name for these type of communities, single family rental but we are specifically talking about these types of um, multifamily communities, not single family detached homes that might be for rent. Um, there are even some single family communities that are being um, what called built to rent, where they are um, built as single family communities, but a company is renting them out as homes. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about where there's multiple units on one parcel of land. And as I said, they're typically one story, and these type of units also have some type of small backyard to them. And that's often why they're attractive to renters um, who have pets. <coughs> and then these might condoize too. Again, this is a new product, so we haven't seen this happen yet. But if they were to just split up um, the airspace in the home so that you would only own the interior of your house, you might be able to do that without zoning. But if they wanted to divide up so I would also own that back patio, that would be a subdivision. And so that would probably require some type of zoning process and full subdivision process. So again, just to summarize, they're built as a multifamily product. Um, so from a land use perspective, it is multifamily. Um, the single family rentals are about 11 dwelling units per acre compared to the conventional multifamily we've been seeing at 20 dwelling units per acre. And one other thing to note about this product type is um, we've heard from the developers of these product types that Phoenix is kind of ground zero. There have been a sprinkling of these in other areas, <laughs> but they, they are mostly be, be, being built in the Phoenix area. And they're mostly being built in the suburbs of Surprise, Mesa, Gilbert, and Goodyear. So it is likely, um, we're gonna go through some data later in the presentation that Goodyear 
has more of these than anyone else in the country. So as usual, um, we'll take a look at the general plan, what the general plan has to say as far as guidance with multifamily developments. Um, so we do want to emphasize that multifamily residential is an important part of a healthy community. And one of the goals of the general plan is to provide a diverse stock of housing that meets the, re the needs of all residents. Um, so in order to do that, we want to provide um, options for current and future residents. Um, we want to um, have a geographic dis geographic distribution of multifamily housing. And uh, the general plan also emphasizes higher density development near retail and entertainment, jobs and transportation corridors. And that's in order to improve accessibility for residents, um, increase the number of households and residents, um, and encourages pedestrian traffic, which also improves economic vitality. So I'm gonna um, delve into some of the data trends we've been seeing. So this slide is all of the dwelling units. The blue is single family dwellings, the red is multifamily dwellings, and those red numbers at the bottom are the percentage of multifamily. This is just a sampling of communities um, throughout the valley. Um, and one of the big points I wanted to show here is that there's no right mix of single family, multifamily. There's no, we're targeting to have this percentage of our dwellings be multifamily. There's um, many healthy communities that have um, a wide range of um, different housing product types, as you can see on the example here. Uh, you can guess Tempe has the largest percentage of multifamily in the valley. We can guess why, because of the university influence. Um, one thing we do see that's a trend is that the more jobs the communities have, the more multifamily there typically is. So it's no surprise with all the jobs we've been attracting to Goodyear that we've been seeing more multifamily development in Goodyear. Um, so this is just a sampling of trends. Um, again, the blue is single family. So a few years ago, um, we had about 2,500 multifamily dwellings, about 9% of our housing stock. Today, we have about 3,200 multifamily dwellings. It still represents about 9% of our housing stock though because of the single family growth. If we were to um, extrapolate and single family growth continues on the current pace it has been and all the multifamily projects that are in queue were to develop though, um, in a couple years we'd see about um, multifamily is gonna be making up about 18% of our housing stock and we're gonna to jump to over 7,000 multifamily dwellings. And again, that's because we have a lot of multifamily in development right now um, due to all the jobs we've been bringing to the city. So what I wanna do now is delve into that multifamily piece. So what these numbers are, these are all multifamily units, but what we're doing is comparing conventional multifamily, so the apartment condo type um, developments with single family residential. Sorry, single family rental, thank you. <laughs> so today on the ground available for rent, about 9% of our multifamily dwellings are the single family rental product. We have about 300 dwelling, uh, single family rental dwellings in the city. Um, we have some under construction and if you add those to the totals, we're gonna have about 19% of our multifamily homes are the single family rental product. If you include those in development review, so they currently have a site plan or construction plans in, um, we're gonna have over 2,000 of these dwellings and they're gonna represent 30% of our multifamily development. And then if you add in those projects we've had pre-application meetings with, it could be as much as 35% or over 2,800 single family do rental dwellings. <laughs> and to put that into perspective, there's about 5,900 homes in Australia. <laughs> So imagine if half the dwelling units in Australia were single family rentals, that's how many are currently in process today in the development process. Looking at the same data in a slightly different way, and I kind of like to look at this slide from the right to the left. So again, there's, 300, there's over 300 units built today available for rent. There's 491 under construction, so we expect those to be available for rent in about a year. Um, then we have another over 800 of the single family rentals that are in process that so they have site plan or construction plans in for review. So we expect those to be available for rent in um, the next year or two. 
And then there's another um, over 300 units that are currently in for zoning and we've had pre-apps with over 800 units. So we expect over 1300 single family rental units to hit the market in the next one to two years. So we've been hearing that they're renting very well, but um, again, we're gonna have a big influx of these units hitting in the next year or two, the Goodyear market. And again, as we have these pre-apps, we're hearing that Goodyear is a desirable place. We are a desirable community. They think they can get the rents that these pull here. And with all the jobs that we're bringing in there, um, they see a demand for additional multifamily units. So if Mayor, can we take, we'll pause just for a second and see if there's any questions about the data that we could answer or clear up? You know, it would be interesting, I, I see your slide there, what's under construction and under pre-apps. It'd be interesting to see on jobs on overlay on top of that to see how that's growing because it's kind of hard when you're looking, asking for some feedback on what we should do with these single, uh, with these um, the multifamily because uh, I imagine they're looking at this to figure out if there's enough demand for it. And if you're doubling more than what those percentages of jobs that are coming in, maybe that's a pause for thought. Maybe they can't keep pace. So if you can get that, I think that would also be helpful to show what our projected job base increases are, because you say there's a linkage between the two, right? Jobs and, and these rentals. So that'd be kind of curious to look at to see what it is. But, but it's kind of hard sitting up here when you're asking for feedback on whether we got too much, not enough, or whatever the case may be. You can see what's driving them and see what some of those relationships are. Unless it's coming up in some other slides that I haven't seen yet. Does that make sense? No comment. So um, what we wanted to do is clear up. I appreciate your point, Councilman Pizzolo. Thank you very much. And we can certainly get that overlaid working with our uh, colleagues in ECDEV. Um, at this point in time, what we would like to do is just transition and keep moving forward if we can, because we're going to kind of bring it together and then ask a question at the end. Okay. All right. Laura has a question. Laura? I just want to confirm you said that the single family rentals are a relatively new product and we are one of the test markets. So it's just want to make sure. And how old is the, the concept? Thank you. Um, the Avila product project that was built um, in the Palm Valley area on Indian School Road was the second of its type is my understanding. Um, and that was built, I think in 2015. Okay. Um, and so a villa had built, I, I think, two or three of these communities throughout the valley around 2014, 2015. They've done very well. So over, over the last, I'd say, three years is really that there's been an explosion of these community types throughout the valley. All right. Thank you. Bill? So from the standard multifamily um, to this single family rental, they're occupying land that we have already zoned for multifamily, right? So, um, and the dwelling unit per acre is less. So it's a smaller population, a different model. I'm trying to get to where the problem is necessarily. And as now a former renter for the last year, um, the single family model would have been far more preferable for us uh, downsizers, <laughs> I guess is the way to say that. Um, but one of the things that I think would be helpful for this entire conversation later on is at the groundbreaking for the project at the corner of Virginia and Pebble Creek, the property owner during his remarks gave some incredible statistics about the uh, the person that they're targeting in that particular type of single family single family rental sorry that I think really tells really what the market is all about and I, I if, if, you, if one of our council members and I think there were a few that were not there um, and I don't recall what the numbers were, but they were amazing. We've got, I think we have to have that information to make a good policy decision um, because that's really the, the trend of what's happening with the millennials. And I'm seeing that with my own kids and, and the, the, ba the, the baby, baby boomers like myself that are downsizing. And then those that are baby, baby boomer, junior baby boomer. Um, 
but to see what's happening with that might be helpful as we talk about what's going on as far as apartment, traditional apartment living versus the single family model. Um, that would be helpful, I think, in a yellow paper when you fill in the info from Council Member Pizzillo. <laughs> we'll go from there. Brandon? So I make sure I got this right. So this chart here with the valley comparisons, is that, so that's based on all multifamily and single family rental compared to residential stock, correct? That is correct. And this data is from 2017 because that's the newest data that was available for valley-wide data. Okay, and then with the trends that we're going right now, I mean, a lot of it was a makeup compared to the other multifamily? If we were to be, I guess, what percent do you think we'd get to at the end of this, end of that, um, end of that there? Oh, there, oh, 18%, okay, good, okay. And then do we know uh, on average what the rent is compared to what the jobs that we're creating are, are uh, kind of people that are, all these new jobs that are coming Mm -hmm. afford the, ho the apartment that or multi single family rental product that we're hoping they'll want to purchase or be part of? Thank you. We do not have the exact rents that um, they're going for um, in Goodyear. <clears throat> we do know that they obviously cost more because you have a lower dwelling units per acre. So they are going to charge more to reach their overall bottom line. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, supply and demand will, I'm sure, be part of it too. Thank you. Holly? So this is interesting. Just today when I was doing my physical therapy, I was talking to the therapist who said to me, I'm in an apartment and I'm going to move over to ya, ya, ya place. And I said, really, why? And he said, because I have a backyard and in an apartment, I do not. And I said, well, how long have you lived where you are? And he said, two years. And he said, but I just feel that I get more for my money when I am in, well, it's the Avila on Centura. And he said, I just feel I'm getting more for my money by having a single unit home with a backyard. So this is a young professional who has been doing what he's doing for probably six years, he's single, does not want to mow the grass, does not want to rent a house, but he loves this type of living, kind of lock it up and go, so. So real quick, let's jump into the geographic distribution that we mapped out for you. So on this first exhibit, there's three different colors, and this is a, encompasses all of the types of multifamily that Katie was mentioning. Um, so the black is built and occupied, um, or in the case of the new villa at uh, Van Buren and Estrella, I think they're currently renting. Um, the green is in the process, so everything beyond, um, or pre-app, in development review, um, or, we've heard from the developer that they're looking into multifamily. And then red is those areas that we have left that are zoned for multifamily. Um, the, so what's important to note here is that the single family rentals could go into those red areas. And what we wanna point out is that the red areas that are left on the map um, equates approximately 50 acres. So if we did conventional multifamily develop, development on those red areas, um, that would, at about approximately uh, 18 dwelling units per acre, that equates to about 900 units. If those were to develop as single family rentals at about 12 units per acre, which is what we usually see, it would develop uh, at 600 units. So that's a loss of approximately 300 uh, units of multifamily um, and 300 uh, residents in Goodyear. This next map shows the, the geographic distribution of the comparison between single family rentals and conventional multifamily. 
So most of the conventional multifamily is built and occupied. Um, a lot of the blue areas you've seen recently for rezones. Um, and what we've noticed just as far as geographic distribution, we've seen a lot along Cotton Lane in the future uh, 303 build out and a lot along the Strayer Parkway. So um, now we get to the policy question uh, for this evening. But before I get to that, why does the trend about single family that we're experiencing with single family rentals matter? Well, the council or vice mayor Stipp's question about a potential uh, reduction in the number of dwelling units that we have in the city, since as Katie and Alex pointed out, single family rentals are less dense than conventional apartment projects. Single family rentals are eight to 10, eight to 10 or excuse me, 10 to 12 units per acre uh, conventional apartment projects, 18 to 20 units an acre. So if we take all of the property where the single family rentals have been constructed and we, and we say that could have been apartments, we've actually lost approximately 3,000 dwelling units in the city, which is a pretty significant number. And that loss of dwelling units um, can or may negatively impact the ability of the city, of the city to attract retail and entertainment users because we have that many less, uh, that much less of a population base, both daytime and just overall. So that is a question that le this leading up to our question. Um, there's also some long-term questions, as you heard uh, Katie and Alex point out, and um, I think one of you had asked about how many, uh, how much of this is being developed throughout the Valley. Goodyear is on the forefront of this, and this is a very new product, and we do not have a clear understanding of the life cycle of how these products um, move forward through their after construction, nor do we have an understanding of what the project owners may do as an exit strategy if, the, if there's a glut on the market and suddenly they can't achieve the, the, the market rate rents that's needed. So those are two important questions. As Alex pointed out, another point um, that we'd like to illustrate is the fact that a lot of the single family rental projects that we have been experiencing have been concentrated primarily along Cotton Lane and then also on Australia Parkway. The final thing I'd point out for you is because of the way that the model of this product works, meaning they're one story with central amenities, mm -hmm. shared parking, the layout of them, regardless of the developer, are all, all going to be very similar. They're going to look alike. They're going to feel very similar. So. If we have a whole lot of these developed, there's not going to be a lot of diversity in terms of the layout or necessarily um, what, what they offer. Um, so we just wanted to point that out as well. So that leads us to the question that we'd like to pose to you tonight. Because of the sheer amount of single family rental that we have been um, having in pre-apps and you've seen the PADs come through. Um, so given the preceding conversation that we had tonight, the data that Katie presented, the trends that we're experiencing, and also some questions that we posed. We're wondering if now is the right time to address the pace of the single family rentals in Goodyear. If council um, gives us policy direction and says no, stay the course, then staff will continue to proactively work with uh, projects coming through the pipeline and you will continue to see PADs come forward for zoning changes and zoning amendments. And we also expect this, that you would experience the same type of volume of those cases moving forward. If council would like to uh, address the pace of this growth, then we would then, and so the answer is yes, then we would correspondingly, correspondingly discourage these projects during the pre-app process we would eliminate the use of PADs as the, as the vehicle by which these would be considered by Planning Commission and Council. And then we would, as a staff level, propose new single family rental zoning districts that really focus on creating very high quality standards. So that's kind of the question we'd like. You know, we saw a trend of these. There's a, a very high percentage of our multifamily development um, is single family rentals and we're wondering if there's too much if that market niche is too hot for Goodyear and we're wondering what council thinks. Joe? You know I personally like the single family rentals with one exception. I like to see them have the same standard as any housing development that are single family which means you have to have at least 
three type of, um, what do you call it, facades or whatever you want to call them. And they have to be different instead of the same box in all the places. I don't know why we can't do that when you're talking about the single family rentals, because we do that in neighborhoods. If they're single family standalone, they cannot be the same design right next to each other. Okay. And that's what I think would lighten some of these up where you have them all looking like one similar box. But the fact that the, uh, the one that's going on, uh, what is it? Uh, Virginia right there. At, the, one, the new one. That's yeah, the new one that's going up. I, I like the one that uh, Council uh, Vice Mayor Stitt was talking about. I like that concept. They're going to be a little bit of difference on the facades. They're single family, and I do believe there's a market out there. Mm -hmm. from, from my perspective, you know, having three-story buildings that look the same, and there's, you know, I wouldn't say hundreds of them, but multiple, to me, that kind of detracts from the appearance of the city versus if you have the single family units that are broken apart, or don't look the same all the way through. And I understand the downside as far as trying to get count up. But sometimes the aesthetics, from my perspective, are a little better than the count. So that's my two cents worth. Those lines are different there, right? Yeah. There are some on the one on Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, peaked, uh, yeah I was impressed when they gave us a tour on how those were going to look. So to me, that would be kind of the standard from my perspective. Yeah, so that's the difference on those, and they're not flat roof. Um, next. Bill? So... Uh, I absolutely agree with uh, Councilmember Pizzillo on this. Um, that in this on this slide, it's a yes or no. I would say no, but no, but let's put in design standards in the design guidelines. Because right now you're giving us a choose no or choose yes, and there's a middle of the road here. And I think um, I I think I'd really like to see that you know diversity of product within the within the, the concept. And it was interesting, I didn't really, you went back to the, the slide that showed where all of these things are. And off of Litchfield Road on the right hand side was a single family rental uh, colored little deal. And it didn't dawn on me, but that's Park Shadows. Park Shadows has been in this community as a single family rental, I don't wanna say since the beginning, but it, I mean, it was base housing and then it turned into single family rental. We know, we have experience in this community what a single family rental can do and and its longevity i mean for i'm going to say at least 40 years we've had those so um i i think it's the i think we're on the the tip of the iceberg here as far as what what's changing in the trends and and the idea that we've lost 3000 residents um i don't think the pace of building is a problem in our city. Um, and I think being able to offer a huge diversity of products for people to come in at all stages of their life is really, really important. Um, so I would hate to see us go away from that. So I'm m more in favor of the no, but let's put, do something in the, in the design standard. Laura? When we were at the league conference, uh, housing was a big hot topic there. And I can say a lot of people in other towns and cities in Arizona would be desperate for this type of product, uh, mainly because uh, either the short-term rentals are devastating their, their market, or uh, I even met a council member from Chandler who said, I couldn't even afford to move into my city anymore. So, it, you know, times are changing and we want people to be able to come here and, and, and still be accessible. But I also am hearing from people that they want something between the, the multifamily rentals and a, and a single family home in terms of condos. And we don't have a whole lot of product with condos, it seems. And where there are some, it seems that there's a lot of activity with them. And uh, one of the projects that I found to be one of the most exciting, I think it was the Del Rosa project. So when I always think about Romans, the Romans project, um, where they were very innovative in the, the pocket neighborhoods and, and really creating something that was unique and special that had that commercial aspect in addition to um, centering the residents around the, the open space to uh, foster relationships. And they put a lot of work into that. And uh, that was definitely something. So 
Um, I know that obtainable housing is going to be important um, as we move forward. I, I think that um, this is an opportunity for us to maybe be more creative. I would love to, like I said, love to see more condos and, and time to upgrade the quality uh, of those types of things. So I think I would be in the, the no but category. Brandon? Yeah, I wanted to clarify the create new district standards that focus on quality. Is Would that be what like Bill and Joe and people are talking about with diversity of housing stock in there? Is that what you're thinking district-wise? So um, if, if we took Mayor um, Councilman Hampton, if we uh, took the yes approach, we may write regulations or create standards that would just, that could slow the pace. I think what we are hearing from several of the council members thus far is the no but, which is revise, create some new standards, focus on the architectural aspect of it and the aesthetics, as council member Pazillo pointed out, but really don't necessarily change the model so that maybe the, the structures that are built has multiple elevations, as council member Pazillo pointed out, and the, the color palette is uh, more broad but let's not have a minimum acres of like 40 as opposed to just letting somebody do 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 acres. So um, we can push on the balloon a little bit, but what I hear thus far council comments are is um, really address the aesthetics of them, not so much the model that they're deploying, if, that's, if I'm hearing everybody correct. Yeah. Uh, can I jump in? I, I think though we would probably, we will need to regroup, but it probably would be easiest to implement by creating a new district yeah. standard because eliminating PEDs is always good administratively anyway and can right. also help future applicants get through the process a lot quicker if they don't mm -hmm. have to write a PED and they have an already made district. Right. And doing that through the zoning, creating a new zoning district rather than amending the design guidelines. Okay. So that would be the vehicle. Okay. Would. Yeah, because I mean, I, I do agree. I think there's a place in the market for that and the landowners think that they can get people that are going to want to want to live in these facilities they've done their research and that's why they invested their money and they want to do it so I, I don't I don't see an issue with them I do to everybody else's point I think there needs to be some diversity of the stock I know there's some some of these that I really don't like and then there's some that I think are are good so I think having the district standards would be better so I don't so I don't see the things that I I don't all the same exactly looking the same they're super close and so yeah so there's a I think there's some different yeah the yes but and then I guess to councilman Laura's also comment as well about um, I know this isn't this topic but I know condos they'd be great too I think this may be a, oh, a segue I know but worst case scenario I think we talked about last meeting is that if for some reason the market changed these could turn into a rezone and a condo potentially one day. They least have the option as, as opposed to a, but I guess the apartment complex could as well. But this thing makes more sense that it could turn into a condo if the market changed for whatever reason. Mayor, um, Councilman Hampton, yes, that that is one vehicle by which there could be an exit strategy from, from rental is condo. As Katie pointed out earlier, another one could be subdivision. And because we haven't seen any of these transition from, since they're so new, yeah. transition from the current model to an ownership model, we're not exactly sure how that would play out. It's just some questions. But yes, yeah. there's a view, it can be, I'm sure it can be done. We just haven't seen it happen yet. Yeah, and I'm not wishing that on, on the rental community, but I'm just saying if that's something that as an option, but yeah. All right, that's all I had. Thank you. I think Wally has something. Yes, Wally. So, Councilman Gerstip, the wonders of the internet. The developer at the, the village of Pebble Creek said, and I quote, uh, what we're doing here as developers is solving a problem. Maricopa County is the fastest growing market in America. And because of this growth, by 2020, we could see rental deficit of 20,000 to 30,000 units. There really isn't enough supply. And he is targeting the millenniums and those who prefer the convenience of renting over owning. And in his development, he's going to have a pet salon, 
uh, Wi-Fi community table, kitchens, 80-inch screen TV. I mean, he's really getting with what people today want. So if we could get other developers interested in changing their product a little bit to attract, I think it would be very beneficial to the city because everyone does not want the same style house, the same color house, the same everything. They like to be a little bit different, I think, sometimes. And um, we're just really excited. I can't wait till they build it to see what it looks like. Um, I, I, so I look at the ones that are on Indian School, or VIA, is it a VIA? Mm -hmm. um, the way they're set up and the way they look from the street look quite good. Um, they had a, a little different in color. Mm -hmm. They have the wall there. They have a tree there. If I drive down um, on Australia and I come to the one section there, it looks like uh, housing in a city that needs to house people just to get them housed. Um, I know that's cruel, and I and I usually wouldn't say that to a developer, um, but it's uh, the color, the space, the lack of, um, and they had the opportunity to make it e better than it is, all right? And okay, maybe you lose a house or two, but to me, after that was finished, I was disappointed. And so when I heard the one on Virginia of what they're doing, roof lines changed, a little bit of amenities, a little, uh, you know, a, a windowsill or something that makes it a little more homey, that appealed to me. And I, I but I understand the cost. I mean, it's all down to cost. You put a trim around a window, then you got so much cost on each of them. I understand their dilemma. They're, they're trying to make it so that it's worthwhile and costing, and they want they want people to fill it up. But I, I don't want us to look like big cities housing people. So you go through housing communities in New York, Detroit, you know anywhere where they're going to house people. It's all the same color. Uh, Many are very little. I don't think we need to be there. Even though I agree with you, I don't want to lose people. I want to make it affordable. Um, but I also want it to last. I don't want to have to repurpose it because it certainly doesn't fit in with um, the population, the income, the jobs, you name it. So I, I get a, a little disturbed when I see that they found a way to make it look like a stamp, you know? So I have a stamp, I'll just stamp it all the way across and it'll all look the same. I want somebody to walk in there to know their home might be just a hair different than the next one. And um, I think it's time to um, tell the builder that they need to also be a little bit creative. We're developing a city with parks. We're doing all the amenities. Uh, we're building a city that's safe. We have a reputation of it being safe. We're building a city of good schools. Uh, we work very hard at that. So all the things that makes those people happy when they, vote, you know, when they enter their home, we're doing all of that. We're putting the money into that. We're making sure that there's enough water. Um, so the things we're doing is we're making, we're building a quality city. So I think that it's time to add just a little bit more to the building industry. So that's my feeling. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I was in the business. So when I wanted a trim or something, you know, and I'd go to the developer and say, I don't like that trim. It, it, you know, it's not a nice trim. It has a crack in it. Well, I understand, you know, then he sat me down and said, this is the, these are the facts, lady. This is what it costs to do that. Uh, but then I also, when I knew that it was uh, an additional feature that was attractive to people, that people wanted it, I would go in and beat the 
door down to tell them why we needed that, why we needed to make that better, a better home for the people. So, um, you know, there's, I, I want to be able to put that sign out. There's no place like home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I don't see that in some of the styles that we're, we're now introducing. It's just kind of like we got to get going, got to build, and got to have enough. And I, I don't want us to get at that point. I want us to be um, caring, okay? Okay, any so, other comments? So, Mayor, if I may just close this conversation so thank you all for giving us the opportunity to for you to weigh in here we wanted to have a gut check with you to make sure we're all working in the same direction so thank you for that so i have two kind of follow-ups one is we will provide via the manager memo this week uh, an overlay of job growth versus the residential uh, and the, the single family and the multifamily housing pr proponent in order to answer council member Pizzillo's question and then lastly uh, what i hear the consensus on the council is the no but uh, so continue to go ahead and let's continue our current practice. However, we will work uh, at a staff level to create a new district that uh, really focuses on the aesthetics of the, of the individual projects and not um, attempts to address the pace of them. Any other comment? Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for making it comfortable to say what we think. We <laughs> thank appreciate you. that a great deal. All right, I don't think council has any reports, any to make to this, okay. Manager, no more summaries, okay. Uh, so the no further business this meeting adjourned.